I took this picture of Bristol Cathedral and I thought it was absolutely fantastic. The choir stalls here, they're lit up. The choir was just about to come out for a practice session. If we zoom in, it's buildings like this. I love it's the detail. It's the workmanship that's gone into this. And just zooming around, just taking a look here, we've got the organist, there's the, the choir master just having a quick chat. You know, it's the wonderful workmanship. It's the detail in all the carvery as well as in the stonework. Zooming out using command zero, control zero, we'll put it fit on screen. What I thought we'd do is take a look at using Topaz Adjust and just seeing how we can bring a little bit more detail out of this picture and add to the color as well. Right, to make a start, we're gonna come across to the layers panel using command J or control J will duplicate the background layer. Something I like to do when applying filters is to actually make the thing fully adjustable. In other words, once you apply a filter to it, using smart objects or smart filters will enable us to save it and then come back into it and make any changes. It's a great idea. So right click in, convert to smart object. That's what we're heading for. Exactly the same as a smart filter. You can see it's now been applied. In fact, if we come to filter, you'll notice convert for smart filters grayed out because it's already there. Dropping down, we're gonna to go to Topaz Labs, Topaz Adjust 4. Clicking on this, just waiting for it to open. It's gonna arrive any second now, in it comes. And it's just loading the generated presets for the thumbnails, and there it is. The first thing to do though, once this has been applied, is drop down and click on Reset, because it does remember the last settings you put in. Clicking on Reset All takes you back to the default image coming across. These are the presets. These are the thumbnails it was actually loading when it was coming through. And if you click on this, you'll notice it's now loading it there in the larger screen. Highlighting over there, you see it coming up in the preview screen there. It's detail we're after. Small detail. Is that expecting too much? Let's take a look. Yes, well, moving swiftly on. Mild detail is uh, you know, that's a bit too mild. Detailed that could be a good starting place. So let's just pop this panel in out of the way. That's going to give us a larger working screen. If we click on sort of, let's go for the little plus symbol there. Let's dive in. Great stuff. Taking a look. We're getting there. I'm going to go straight for detail. Heading in for detail. The first thing we need to do is make sure process detail independent of exposure. Make sure this is ticked. It's By default, it is unticked. Make sure it's ticked. What this will allow us to do is set the detail. Then we can come to the exposure. And the exposure, any settings we put in there, are not going to override. They're not going to sort of you know, enhance them. They're not going to diminish them when we're using the exposure slider. Right, detail, strength. Let's take a look just going to drop this down because it is a little bit too much. Let's head for about 1.5. I think somewhere would could be pretty good. Let's head there. Take a look. There it is. Clicking down. That shows us the original. Releasing it. That's a preview. That looks pretty good there. Taking a look at the boost. I'm going to take the boost up just a touch or two. Just one or two points on that, that area. Liking that. I've got a feeling I just want to reduce this a little bit more. Let's take it down to uh, 1.4 ish there. It's always ish because you can never move these exactly. Yeah, I like that. We've got the detail there. If we just click down, that's the original. Releasing it, bringing it through. You can see some nice detail coming through there. Threshold. Yep. Take a look at that. That's 0.15. It's always a good idea just to make a mental note of the numbers. Uh, and that way then it's just if you sort of bring it back you see how it's looking see that's more like the original bringing the threshold up there we were at point 0.15 to start off with I think we'll head back there the radius now if you just hold your cursor over some of the uh, little buttons like this it's going to tell you what it's doing well it does sometimes but the radius just dropping this down seeing the way that's going to work and as we drop it down you'll notice the way that the actual effect is beginning to sort of drop out a bit it's just if you like it's it's like a feather the wider you take this the wider it becomes the tighter in you bring it the tighter in the effect becomes and it's beginning to disappear there there it is it's now showing us it's the size the variation between the big etc etc so just bring it through i tend to go by how it looks and that's looking pretty good right Moving on, sharpening, 
no I'm not going to touch that I'm going to leave that I, I tend to sharpen a finished image size but I'm not going to do anything for sharpening because we have brought a fair bit of detail out however the exposure clicking on fit we go so we can see the entire picture we're looking at the exposure slider here let's click on this let's drag it up let's take it up to I don't know let's take it up midway let's go for midway point something like that no, just a bit bright. I'm going to drop it down a little touch or two to let's go for head for 35. I tend to like that number for some reason. Yep, nice tones coming through there. Regions, that is set on 50. Let's drop it down the other way and see what that does from one extreme to the other. It brightens it up a fair bit. Let's bring it back to, let's go for 10. That's just darkening it down. I think we're going to leave that on 10 for now. The contrast, the contrast again, let's, you know, you can see it's on a very, it's a minus 0 0.2. Let's take it up into the, nope, not so sure I like the contrast, the area. So let's bring it back to roughly where it was, around about the 0 mark. Should be pretty good. The brightness, now the brightness will make it brighter. It will make it darker. I think we'll go back where we were on zero. Thank you. Right, now the highlights. The highlights, uh, initially, you think increasing this is going to increase the highlight, but it doesn't. It's If you just take a look, where we've got the brighter areas here, for example, up in the top there in the roof, when you bring this through, it's going to darken that down slightly. So if you've blown the highlights, it's a great way of bringing these back. Come back when I'm speaking to you. We're going to bring this to a midway point somewhere like 12 would be pretty good just taking a look yep I like that just noticing if we drop it down you can see the way it's bright around this area let's bring it back up to 8 it's that part of the building I'm looking at in particular like it shadows bringing the shadow area up this is going to brighten the picture up nicely perhaps just a little bit too much of dropping it down liking that clicking down that's the original. That's a preview. This is what we're working towards. Let's click on the little green plus button there to take us in. We can now use the navigator. Zoom in round. That's looking pretty good. Just waiting for it to drop into place. Like we're bringing some nice details through on that. Liking the detail we're getting. Let's take a look at the color. Dropping down. Opening up the color. This is where we're going to take a look. First of all at the adaptive saturation. Bringing this up. We're going to take it to point twenty five there regions just bringing this up let's take that to by the twelve seems like a good number at the time yep like that saturation itself is on one saturation boost taking that up a little bit seeing how that's working just dropping down into this area here wow look what that's doing to the floor perhaps dropping saturation down a touch or two and it's now playing with the sliders and just bringing it through I'm just going to take it the saturation the adaptive saturation just up very very slightly to that area there bringing the regions up very slightly again it is just small adjustments pulling that back so that is there no that's gone too far I want to keep the warmth in the pictures but I don't want to or the picture but I don't want to over stretch it so back a touch or two like that job done don't forget it is a smart object it is a smart filter so we can dive back into this it will give us our original settings so these can be changed like the look of that though let's just take a quick look that's our original that's what we've got clicking OK let's take it through into Photoshop it's now being processed through it goes and any second now it should arrive Right, and coming into Photoshop, there it is, job done. It never quite looks as sort of bright as it does when it's in um, Topaz Adjust. It tends to you know, bring it in here. I think that looks absolutely fantastic. If we just switch it on, on and off, you can see there's a preview. That's what we had before. That's what we've now got. Really like that. So I think it just works a treat. It's just bringing through those, the, the fantastic colors that are in this building. You know, look at that marble floor in there lovely warm sort of almost honey tone in the woodwork there that lovely panel coming through all that uh, woodwork terrific don't forget you can double click on this this will take you back into Topaz so you can make any changes 
You can also just drop down the opacity by clicking on this icon there, but I like the finish on this. I think we'll leave it exactly as it is. Just to finish off though, what I thought I'd do is just come in and this is going to be the finished image. This is be, this will be the image you'll see below this video. It's going to be 1024 on the long side with a white stroke around it. Playing this through like uh, this, through it goes, dropping it down. Just a little bit too much there. That's potentially been my default setting for the sharpening, but for this particular one, let's drop it down. It was originally a JPEG file to stay. Thank you. Don't you just love it when these sliders begin to get a mind of their own? Right, clicking on that, put it in at 50. Let's zoom in. Let's come into 100%. There we are, coming through. That's showing it finished. I tend to do the hide all mask on that, which allows us to be able to sort of selectively sharpen. But for this picture, I want it to be sharp right the way through. So I'm just going to fill it with white. That's the foreground color. To fill it with white, I use Alt and a uh, backspace. That's Alt backspace. It is Option Delete. That's Option Delete. Fills it with the foreground color. Just going to come up, drop the opacity down a touch or two. I don't want to over sharpen that like the look of that now using command e or control e to drop it down that's merge down command e control e again there's the finished image command zero will go to fit on screen and there it is go on give it a try it is just a great way of using topaz adjust to bring the detail out of your picture don't forget if you use it as an adjustment layer as well it, sorry as a smart filter a smart uh, object it allows you to go back into Topaz adjust and make any sort of further adjustments, but I like the finish on this one. So there it is. Go on, give it a go, and until the next time, it's happy imaging and take care.